Hi everyone, it's Angela from Happy Dotting Company. Today I'm going to be um, taking you through a pattern. Um, so this is available on our Etsy site um, and it's a PDF instant download. And it's actually a pattern um, called Carnival because it's so bright and colourful. And it's actually designed by um, Zara at Z Dot Designs. So, um, you know, this comes with some uh, instruction and how to do it sort of thing with the tool size attached to each um, step. So I'm going to be walking us through this today. Um, obviously, this is designed for beginners because some people really appreciate um, more guidance when they're starting. I'm going to be talking um, a little bit about paints, but I won't go too much into that um, because... Uh, I do actually have a separate YouTube on paints and I'm going to be talking about the tools and technique a little bit as well. So essentially I'm going to be treating this as if it's a, um, you know, a class that I'm actually teaching. So um, please join us. So when you purchase Happy Dotting Tools, um, this is how they come, or they also ha we also have a um, beginner kit available. They do actually come with some um, um, hints and tips for getting started, um, and also in the beginner kit there's some as well. So the first thing you'll notice about the tools, um, and this is just some of them, is that they are perfectly flat on the ends, they're made of acrylic, they're brightly coloured, <coughs> and they're precision cut. Now, um, the technique for the tools and the stylus are different. So firstly, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the tools. As you can see, they're exactly the same on both ends, so it doesn't really matter which end you use. And um, the, there's a few tips that really make all the difference when using the tools. So the first tip is that you're going to hold the tools perpendicular to the surface that you're dotting on. So not like a pen like this, you're going to hold it perpendicular. The other thing is that um, you're going to actually dip in your paint every single dot. So um, if you can imagine there's some paint, so we're going to go dip, dot, dip, dot. And that is actually how you get consistent size dots. I mean, when you're a bit more experienced, the amount of paint or the amount of pressure you apply can also make a difference to the dot. However, um, when you're starting, I just recommend that you dip in the paint every single time. Now, the other very important tip is that when using dotting tools, don't press down hard. You're not stamping. All you want to do is just make contact with the paint on your um, surface of whatever you're dotting on. So um, I'm going to be just doing some demonstration dots initially here on some card that I have. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of paint there and just show you how this goes. So as a general rule of thumb, the smaller tools tend to be easier to use than the bigger tools. But the bigger ones, you know, you can certainly, um, you know, become really good at those just with a little bit of practice. So I'm just demonstrating here that I'm going straight up and down. My tool is perpendicular to the surface and I'm not pressing down hard. I'm really just making contact with that surface. You can see that there. Now we clean the tools either with a damp kitchen wipe or with a um, some wet wipes and that's what I have here. I usually just have a packet of home brand wet wipes beside me. So as you can see I've just made some demonstration dots there. Now I'm going to talk about the stylus. So the stylus has a small end and a big end. Now it is different from the rods in that you don't have to hold it perpendicular. You can hold it like a pen and I'm going to show you a little technique here called walking the dots and this sort of technique is used for all sorts of embellishment in your dot art. So I'm just going to, and you'll notice I've only dipped once with the stylus, and that's called walking the dots. So I'll do it with the small end. And there we go. So there's just some tips on using the tools. And now we're going to progress and actually do the little um, mandala. 
So I've poured myself some paint here and I'm just going to talk momentarily about paint. As I said, I do have another YouTube clip that um, goes into paint a bit more. Um, but the first thing I wanted to tell you is that for this style of dot painting, um, I do recommend using a fluid acrylic. And what that means is that the, um, the paint is... Um, you know, comes in different fluid consistencies and you can get it um, acrylic paint in heavy body, medium body, and this is a bit more fluid. So it should sort of be a, um, you know, not a whipped cream, but a um, sort of a creamy sort of consistency. Um, in Australia, you can hear from my accent that I'm in Australia, um, I'm using Joe Sonja's um, matte fluid acrylics and um, we're lucky to have these. They're a really great quality paint um, and um, they, they are matte. However, you can always just use a gloss spray over the top. So I do recommend these. They're nice and opaque. My other favorites include the golden fluid acrylics um, that I think you can get all over the world. Um, there's also some... Um, some deco art um, and as you can hear that's sort of quite fluidy there um, these are available in the UK I believe um, in the US and um, Canada and such I believe that you can get um, great uh, paints in craft stores like the Martha Stewart's that um, are terrific and I've also heard recently that Amsterdam paints are really good too so that's all I'm going to say on paints in this YouTube tutorial and um, we're just going to crack on here. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, I've got a stencil here and I've got my little 4x4 um, canvas and I've prepped that with some black uh, background paint. Any black sort of acrylic paint that you have on hand is absolutely fine particularly for when you're starting you don't really want to stress over that too much so I've allowed that to dry and here I have a General's um, chalk uh, pastel pencil and the reason why I'm choosing to use this one is that when the paint is dry afterwards I can actually remove this any chalk residue with just a damp sort of um, earbud or cotton bud or piece of cotton so I'm just going to draw the um, draw in the lines here it doesn't really matter which order you go in just however it suits you So there we go, I think I've done all the guidelines. I'm just gonna sneak a peek and that looks fine under there. So I'll take that off now. Um, okay, so firstly we're going to do start in the center and we do this for most mandalas and probably the main reason you do that is that mandalas do tend to work from the inside out. Um, it also helps not to put your hand in it. If you're working from the outside in then you do risk putting your hand in wet paint. Now, um, to get the middle, you can just start with a um, small tool and get the size you want. It's a lot easier to use the small tool if you make a mistake and then use a bigger tool over the top, whereas obviously you can't do that the other way around. What I sometimes help, what I sometimes do to help get the center is actually just sketch in these lines like that with your pencil. Right. And I'm just going to go for it here with my very first dot, which as you'll see in the PDF download is a blue tool with white paint. And there we go. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now back to the instructions and the next one is to use a red tool with yellow paint and make um, eight dots actually on those grid lines. So let's do that. Now 
I'm just looking at uh, my page here to the right. So the next one is the stylus. And we're going to be placing an orange dot. So using the large end of the stylus, we're going to be placing an orange dot in between those yellow dots. And this is called offsetting. I am dipping in the paint every time because I'm not walking the dots at the moment. I'm dipping my stylus in the paint every time so that I do get consistent size dots. And now the next instruction is I'm going to be using some red paint and I'm going to be using the blue tool and it's going to be on the grid lines too. So with dot painting, as a general rule, you try not to let your dots touch. Sometimes it's unavoidable and your spacing can get a bit off, but it's actually sometimes the space between the dots that can actually create the effect. Now we're going to be placing um, some orange paint with a red tool and going between those dots. color is green and I'm going to be using a pink tool and we're going to be placing green dots on the grid lines above the previous row of red. So this paint is actually a little bit stringy so just a tip if your paint is a bit stringy just make sure that you bring it directly up rather than across your work because otherwise the string um, will snap across your work but it's okay if it snaps in the middle if that makes sense so there we go and on with the next instruction. So the next instruction is to use a light green paint with our big um, blue tool again. And again, we're going to use these grid lines. So just to reiterate what I was saying at the beginning, notice that I'm holding the tool perpendicular to the canvas and I'm not pressing down too hard, dipping in the paint every time. There we go. The next colour is going to be orange and we're going to be using the Move tool. tool to go on either side of that um, dot that we've just made. Next 
step is to now walk the dots with our small end of our stylus. And you're just basically walking the dots until you run out of paint. Or you can count the dots to try and get them even. I normally don't bother counting, but a lot of people do. So I'm just dipping in the paint when I want to start a new row of walking the dots. So the next step is using the blue tool to put a blue dot in between the green. The next step is going to be the pink tool with pink dots and we're just going to go on the outside of those blue just being careful that uh, we're not going to actually touch our um, dots that we've been walking there in the yellow so I'm being extra careful that I don't press down hard if you think you've gone too wide with your um, walking the dots and you don't have space simply just go down a size in your tool now we're going to use the red tool again and we're just going to put two little dots on either side of that top pink one The next step is going to be using my orange tool with some green paint just on the edge of these pink ones. I would say another tip for beginners is that although you might be enjoying it, it's probably better to do small sessions often of dotting rather than a huge long session in one or two days. Because you do get tired, your hand gets tired, um, you get mentally tired from the concentration, which is actually a good thing because um, that's, you know, when you concentrate hard on anything really including making dots that also frees your mind up from other worries so um, you know whilst that's a good thing it's I think it's better to do small sessions and um, you'll progress quickly I have no doubt now the next step is I'm going to be walking the dots again and this time it's going to be on the outside of the green dots so I'm just going to show you that I'm, I've basically got to line up the centre here because we don't have a grid line. And I'm going to put a dot in the middle and then I'm going to walk around the outside of that. Now I'm dipping in the paint again and I'm actually dotting in the middle again. So that makes that dot in the centre even bigger. But it just means that I'm starting in the same spot. So I'm just sort of eyeballing across the centre to make sure I'm in the middle dip in the paint again and then go to the other side 
walking the dots does take some practice it can be a little frustrating at start because um, you know maybe your spacing isn't great but please believe me just with a bit of practice um, in no time at all you can get much better step is I'm just going to use the small end of the stylus again and just put a little yellow dot on the outside of these large orange ones here and we're nearly finished the first layer now you could if you want to just put a smaller dot on um, either side of that larger dot to make a, um, a little cap for it or you can use um, a micro tool um, so that's a dotting tool that's even smaller or you could use even a toothpick or something and I'm just going to actually do two little dots here now I'm being particularly careful not to press down because I actually want these dots to be smaller to let this completely dry um, and then I'm going to do some uh, top dots as well as um, before I do that actually I can take off the um, the chalk marks so um, we'll leave this for um, at least a few hours um, and probably even overnight it's a good idea so now that I've left this um, little mandala a while to dry I want to take off these um, white chalk marks that we drew on there for our guidelines. So there's a couple of ways to do this. You can just use a little earbud like this and dip it into some water or, you know, like a little sort of soft cotton bud. But the main points are is make sure that your paint is really dry and um, sort of just try not, try not and be nice and gentle when you do it. I'll just show you how that goes. It should just come away. So I'm pretty happy with that. We're now just going to do some top dots. And I'm just going to be using the same colours that are recommended in the PDF. So again, they're just nice bright colours.
So now I'm going to let this completely dry and then I will uh, give it a gloss coat. So the gloss coat that I prefer to use is a, um, a Liquitex high gloss varnish um, and I'll just show you the label here. Liquitex high gloss varnish and it needs usually um, two or three coats. Um, but lots of people also like using the um, spray glosses and you can find that either at your art supply shop or even hardware shops. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed watching today. Uh, again, I'd like to thank Zara from Z Dots for making this possible. Um, you know, obviously it's worked out beautifully with the size tools. Um, if you'd like to see more of this, then uh, please subscribe and then you won't miss it. And if you um you know either are, are a beginner or if you know someone who would um you know benefit from learning to dot paint or would enjoy dot painting then please share this link with them so thank you so much for watching and i hope you really enjoyed it bye